What up, players? It's Warboss Tay back up in his mug. Welcome to part three, the finale of how to paint Tiberos the Red Wake for the Carcharodon's army in Warhammer 40k. Tiberos, I think I mentioned this all throughout the beginning, but he's a fourth world character, and so the extra amount of detail and uh, just really nice thought and effort that went into the sculpt of this model really pays off in in, in, in a good way, I think. And as we're getting on to the end, I'm showing you what he looks like completely, and these are the paints you're gonna need. Steel Legion Drab, first of all. One of the weathering bits I forgot to do was all of the accumulations of dirt and grime. And uh, for Carcharodons, Car who don't have dedicated, um, I guess, tech marines and helpers and human wards, they really need to take care of their equipment themselves. A lot of it is old and uh, worn, so that's what that dirt and grime is going to be for. Also, you can see uh, Abaddon Black and uh, Administratum Gray were also used for the marking. So I'm going to show you how to do the Space Sharks symbol. And because I'm doing it freehand, it's always going to look different. It's never going to be exactly the same, but I think that's you know some of the fun of doing these symbols. And you know, with practice, 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 anything can improve. So maybe one day I will get nice identical Space Sharks logos. I'll just show you how my, my process of doing that is in this video. Hopefully you can take something from it. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm taking some water and I am really thinning down this Steel Legion Trap. You can also use Lamy and Medium if you're mixing them in a wet palette. And um, I'm just kind of mixing it in the paint pot lid it's just gonna evaporate it's just water it's not uh, any kind of chemical and what I'm doing is I'm lining all of the um, corners of where one armor plate uh, changes direction or goes into a different piece of the armor plate so anywhere where naturally you would get an accumulation of dirt and grime we want to give the impression that this warrior has been on campaign for months if not years and he's able to clean the, uh, the the main parts of his army is able to try to repair the most grievous damage but a lot of the surface scratches a lot of the um, I guess wear and tear that would naturally come from striding across the battlefield of the 41st millennium is going to stay so I'm painting like within the fingers the, like any of the, the areas like here on the helmet the reason why I use Steel Legion Drab is because it's not a bright yellow or white kind of uh, dirt and grime. It's a very muted brown. And so it's going to naturally look like it belongs rather than a very glaring color. Like if I was to use uh, Doombo Brown, it's very red to symbolize maybe he's on a, a planet like Mars with a lot of red dirt or red stone, but uh, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to go for a more natural kind of weathered brown. And so I'm really loading my brush up with this uh, water, watered down paint. The trick is you almost want it to be like brown, <laughs> like brown water rather than watered paint because you don't want it to be thick. You want it to be um, thin enough that as soon as you put it on, it'll kind of seep into all of the different corners and all of the cracks and just kind of create a very natural fade from the armor plate itself to the uh, brown color. And you don't want it so thick that it looks like you're actually painting brown onto the model. You want it to look like, uh, like I said, weathered dirt and dust that just has uh, grown over the, the weeks and the months. So I'm not painting it on the large flat areas. I want the eye to still pick up a majority of gray, dark gray, different shades of gray. What I am doing with the brown is creating the illusion of uh, this being a very aged and um, respected and venerable armor. You want to be careful too not to use too much because you don't want it to blend into the gold coloring. So after giving my model a little bit of time to dry, I'm going into the Administratum Gray now, and we're going to paint on the shark symbol. I'm only using two layers of paint for this. You can use more if you want to uh, really create a solid, thick coat of paint on the, uh, on, on the insignia, but I decided to just go with the first layer 
kind of watered down you want to or, or thin down if you want to use lamian medium or any kind of acrylic medium you're basically going to be painting a crescent shape and you want it to be smaller at the bottom thinner and a little bit larger and fatter thicker at the top because that's where you're also going to be creating your fin when you look at the carcaridon symbol the shark nose is pointed forward so even though the, the body is curving down almost like in a in a crescent shape your um your shark is going to be facing forward rather than down sometimes i think when i first started trying to create this symbol i painted the nose kind of down at an angle like at a diagonal and it's really more angled forward so as you can see i'm just making the crescent shape and you're hey you're gonna make mistakes it's gonna be too thick it's not gonna look like a shark at the beginning and that's okay it's it's totally fine to have a mess when you first start out because you're gonna be cleaning it up and you're gonna be uh, fixing it and you need to anyways because that's how you create the fin that's how you're going to draw in the eyeball or, or the eye on the side and that's also how you're gonna draw in the gills so I wish I could really uh, have a camera angle that's a little bit better than this one I'm kind of having to show it to you at an angles so that I can still paint it and not um, look really bad but there there you go that's kind of an idea of how it first looks you can see it's still really rough it's really um, undefined it's a little thin at the bottom and that's okay like I said we're going in thin layers you want to water down your paint because if your paint is too thick if I took the paint right out of the pot or if I just you know wipe some of it off but I didn't water it down I still had the paint straight out of the pot then it would uh, create a very clumping effect the uh, lines would be really thick at the edges and it would look just um, not as polished, which is what I want to create. And I think at this point I said, I gotta take off, I gotta take off my old man glasses. It sounded like Lewis there for a second. I, I, I wanna be able to see the model a lot. And what I'm doing with my Abaddon Black is the same thing, I'm watering it down so that I can start to create the definition. If you want, you can do one more layer of Administratum Gray before you do the definition. I decided to go with the definition first and then paint within the lines. So we're doing a little bit more of a close-up so I can show you uh, hopefully what I'm doing here. What am I doing? Oh, hello, I'm painting on the tattoo. I was like, what am I doing? I'm painting on, every Carcaridon has a shark fin stylized, almost Polynesian tattoo looking fin art over his eye. Like, what I mean by that is like a piece of, of art drawn onto the helmet that looks like a shark fin. But it doesn't look like a real shark fin. It's a bunch of different lines and patterns and dots and swirls and it's a lot easier to do when your model does not have these gold studs on the top of his helmet. So what I'm working around is trying to create the impression of a curved shark fin while also letting that gold shine. Now how you do your fin is up to you. It could go in the direction of the helmet. It could kind of hook around so that it almost looks like a um, a, a, a graph, a chart, as it were, so that it kind of swoops up, or it could swoop over like how my shark fin is looking right there on the side. And I'm, I'm just doing like individual lines to create the image of the shark fin. Instead of painting on one thick fin or, or doing a one fin line, I'm doing a, a, a number of different lines. Moving back to the Administratum Grey now, I'm kind of evening out the tail and I have my laptop open next to me with the Carcaridon symbol on it so I can kind of see oh, my uh, the top of my head isn't really matching the angle of the fin. The bottom, the tail needs to kind of have a flared out look where the two points kind of are almost horizontal. And I just I think at this point now what I'm going to be doing is switching back and forth between my Administratum Gray and my Abaddon Black, and this is less of a I guess a technique or or where I tell you this is how I did it, 
or this is how you have to do it. It's, it's more of me doing trial and error, which is what freehand really is. A lot of trial and error unless you block out your, your symbols. Another technique talking about blocking it out is uh, some people I know like to make points and then connect the dots. I found this a little bit of a difficult challenge for me because I'm more of a person that likes to see the shape and the outline. And if all of that is filled in, then I can uh, clean up the edges. I can go back in with the uh, surrounding paint and then create the shape from that. And that's kind of what I'm doing here. You can see I'm Good boy, Tiki. You can see that I'm painting the uh, the back of the shark, so that it kind of swoops down and around. I'm kind of thinning out the body, so it's not as as thick. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear my dog. He's next to me. He's panting. It's really hot tonight. Good boy, Duke. And. Uh, really the trick is to just see what the shape is supposed to be and just practice just keep doing it. there's no way to I guess explain it or teach it if I just tell you how I'm doing it it's one way or one thing to do that and I can say this worked for me and this is how you should always do it but it's another thing to actually put the paint on the model because you might be more of a of a connect the dots kind of painter you might be more of like I am just do the outline do the shape or create the shape and then create the lines around it. And uh, see, because because I kind of have seen how the angle of the nose is starting to dip downwards, I'm I realize oh I gotta I gotta angle the nose up. So I'm just straightening out the uh, the tip because I don't want <laughs> I don't want my shark to look like a dolphin. It's not the the space dolphins or the space flippers. It's space sharks, and sharks have more of a very a sharp and pointed nose, flat horizontal head going into the nose rather than a dolphin that's more rounded with the little the little dolphin snout. <laughs> What's that? So it's a lot of trial and error. It's a lot of going back over your mistakes, painting around it again. I think if there's one area of the model where you can afford to really go back and forth between your paints and it's not going to really slow you up or or take too much time because it should be at the end it's uh, when you're doing this freehand painting so that's looking a little bit better you might remember that abaddon black is not the color of the actual shoulder pad the shoulder pad itself is more of a mixture of eschen gray and abaddon black and uh, what I'm doing with my Abaddon Black is I'm creating a negative space around the insignia, but not branching it out to touch the dark gray of the rest of the shoulder pad. It, it creates almost the illusion that uh, the white, the bright white of the Administratum Gray, the, the shark insignia, has created an aura around it of darkness. And then the eye will see the, uh, the the shape of the shark a little bit better than if it were to go straight from this administratum gray to the eschen gray abaddon black outline so at this point i've decided to dot the eye and paint the gills and when you're painting you know thin vertical lines like this it's really easy to put too much paint on it and then your lines end up becoming look, looking more like smudges. So uh, you can just go back and use the paint you used before, in this case, Administratum Gray, to re-line all of those gills. Oh boy, I think he needs to drink some more water. I don't know why he hangs out up here with me where I'm recording, like he's got a water bowl and a, a nice soft bed. He probably hears my voice and thinks like, oh, what's going on over here? Is there treats? Are we hanging out? Are we gonna go do something? I might have to stop recording pretty soon and take him out for his walk. It's about that time. Yep, so like I said, I'm just going back over with the Administratum Gray and painting around the black lines so that the lines actually become smaller and thinner 
and uh, there's a little bit more space between them. I'm going to take Dookie out on his walk and uh, we'll come back in for the last part of the video which is putting a little bit of shine to the eyes. Come on, Dookie. Okay, hey, we're back and I've got my gloss varnish out and uh, we're going to just really, really simply paint in the eye lenses. You don't want to get this gloss varnish all over the mask of your helmet because it's going to um, make your whole helmet shiny. You want to just get it into the eyeballs, into the eye lenses. So what it does is it creates the illusion of black, almost insect-like soulless eyes where you can't tell where the guy's looking. And hey, that's going to do it. Thanks so much. The last thing I have to do is actually uh, glue on some seaweed looking things to the base but this is it this is tiburos the red wake from forge world the carcaridon's army for warhammer 40k i'm glad you joined me thanks so much and we'll see you in the next video what an awesome character thanks for joining me on this ride everybody hope you have a good one see you in the next video